what is up everyone welcome back to this channel today we are going to be discussing about chapter number four in embryology now this is essentially the last chapter of embryology after this we are going to be moving to histology about all the epidermis and stuff like that but this chapter number one to four was embryology and this is going to be concluding the last chapter of this series now this chapter we are going to be discussing about week 3 to 8. We already discussed about the sex cells, the week 1 and implantation and the week 2, how they develop. And in this chapter, we are going to be discussing from week 3 to 8. But week 3 and 4 are the most important one because after week 4, they most of the thing the embryo does is just grow and develop. So week 3 and 4 is going to be the main focus of a chapter now in this chapter we will discuss about how the embryo is going to turn from a simple layered embryo to a whole body and how everything derives from where basically it may sound complicated don't worry it might sound complicated but it really isn't because of course as we know in this chapter or in this channel we always break things down to the easiest way possible and I try to explain it from the student's perspective so get your textbook because we are jumping straight in okay so this is the first image that we will be discussing through now you remember this image right it was right on the chapter the previous chapter this is epiblast this is hypoplast now as you see the line the dorsal view is what the line here the line drawn on the epiblast through this red lining that is the line that we are viewing right now this dorsal view of the epiblast as you can see there is the cranial and caudal now unlike before this is now an elongated shape the cranial part is much wider than the caudal part the cranial part we have the precaudal plate and on the caudal part we have the cocal membrane now the main focus point of this image is this red line right here what is this called we call it the primitive steak the primitive steak also has different components like the primitive pit the primitive node and stuff like that but the main important thing this primitive streak is mostly in the second half of this so on the caudal plane this primitive streak is on the second half the lower bottom part and it is all the caudal plane now you see all these arrows right here these arrows indicate the epicell the cells from the epiblast the blue colored right here yeah the cells from the epiblast they try to migrate or move in towards this street they try to just go through it and they try to invade it so all these arrows are the epiblastic cells trying to move into the primitive streak so before even moving any further let's try and discuss some clinical aspects of it we know what the primitive streak is we know where it is it is in the caudal plane and now let's discuss what if the primitive streak doesn't close properly what happens then if the primitive streak doesn't close properly then we might end up with a sacrococcygeal teratoma what is that a sacrococcygeal teratoma is a tumor which is derived from the remnants of the primitive street now since it is from the primitive street we can assume it has epiblastic cell and that blast remember chapter number two blastic cells the cells which will differentiate into another type of cells so epiblastic cell since they are in this sacrococcygeal teratoma we will find all kinds of different cells they can be bone cell no cell they they can be even hair or teeth we can find each and everything you can just look up for teratoma or i can just put it right here teratoma yes they will have all different kinds of cell in them so sacrococcygeal teratoma is derived from the remnants of the primitive streak now another clinical coordinate is hydratiform mold we already discussed it in the chapter before but now that we know what everything is we can discuss it in depth so remember tropoblast in the chapter number two tropoblast which goes on to differentiate and divide into another cells and which basically forms epiblast and hypoblast so what would happen if 
it was just taken over by the willy it, if it was just taken over and we don't have any topoblast what would happen then then we would end up with a high dt form mode that's just another clinical correlate you really don't have to go that much into it but let's go back to our image so now that we know that all the epiblastic cell try to move into the primitive streak so and what happens once they move in let's zoom in into this sectional view so you see this b line the dotted line that is where we are cutting sectional view that is where we are cutting and flipping it so we can see both the epiblast and the hypoblast the yellow one is the hypoblast and the blue one is the epiblast so let's zoom into this the sectional view what happens when the uh, black arrows when the epiblastic cells move in as you can see the cells try to move in the orange one they try to move in and just when they move in they push the hypoderm they push it so much that it starts curving and there comes a time where the cells push it so much that it just pushes down and the hypoblast dies off remember the secret i told you in the chapter before each and every cell derives from the epiblast not the hypoblast now this right here is the perfect in depth explanation all the cells from the epiblast moves in through the groove and they just push the hypoblast down and eventually the hypoblast forms a curve and then it dies off so now we are just left with cells from the epiblast no cells from the hypoblast this yellow lining it won't be here after that so all the cells moving in they just move into the side they just move into the form and once the hypoblast dies the epiblastic cell take over so the cells in the bottom right here now they will be referred as the endoderm endo hypo turns into endo from the epiblast cell now the cells that moves to the side and remain in between they can move either the left or to the right those cell we will refer to as the mesoderm we have the endoderm now above it we have the mesoderm now you may wonder if we have the lower and the middle one what happens to the top one as you can see here this cell they form a layer we had epiblast but now we will refer to it as the ectoderm since we have the endoderm the mesoderm the upper layer we will refer to as the ectoderm the epiblast now we will refer to it as the ectoderm so the ectoderm the mesoderm below it and on the layer bottom layer we have the endoderm it's really not that hard ecto meso endo all right and now another thing you might notice is the white dot right here right in between why why did the cell not occupy this state why are the cells moving on the side and leaving this this white dot which we call the notochord is a different kind of cell they move in they stay there and they transform into the notochord so what's the point of notochord notochord after it's evolved and everything it just leaves us with nucleus pulposus now what is that that is just one component of the spinal cord so you might be wondering is notochord really that important i mean in adult no but when we are forming an embryo yes notochord think of it as an organizer notochord sends signal to the mesoderm all over it and notochord helps differentiate the mesoderm into all kinds of different things so when we are in an embryo when it is developing in an embryonic stage the notochord is like the producer or the manager or the organizer of all things so the me notochord will send signals all over mesoderm and the tell all the cells to differentiate into all different kinds of thing what kind of things we are going to be discussing in the image next now at least we know it's not that important in the other but what would happen if the notochord were to fail again like of course 
we can have this primitive streak fail so why can't the notochord fail of course it can fail and when it fails we end up having chordoma now what is chordoma let me just explain it to you in simple terms it is just a tumor oma chordoma it is just a tumor that arrives from the remnants of the notochord you don't have to look up too much into it just know that it is there chordoma remnants of the notochord moving on now that we have the ectoderm mesoderm endoderm and we can finally move on to what they differentiate into of course ectoderm might derive to other thing mesoderm might give us other thing and endoderm might give us another thing too which is exactly what is listed in this image oh don't get scared too many things don't get scared you do not have to memorize any of this just the important part know what they make and know the type that's all you don't have to remember each and every single thing why because in the chapter down below like further chapters we will be discussing all of this all we have to know is what kind they are and then we can just relate them directly to three either the ectoderm mesoderm or the endoderm that is all now let's relax see remember i told you notochord it just gives us nucleus pulposes yes it's right here that's all notochord gives us it just directs all the mesodermic cell remember mesoderm there it is notochord in the mesoderm it just directs into making all these different kinds of things that's all calm down now let's focus on the endoderm endoderm it says forms the epithelial lining of gi tract and get and no 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 respiratory system too much too much okay but one common mistake most of the students make endoderm does not give us gi tract so foregut midgut hindgut respiratory system everything it does not give us the system that's the different it only gives us the lining the epithelial lining so the only thing you need to remember from endoderm is it just derives into the epithelial cells that's all epithelial cell is does not give you the gi tract as a whole it only gives you the lining of gi tract so what gives us the gi tract mesoderm mesoderm literally forms the smooth cardiac skeletal muscles connective tissues membrane everything most of the thing you can imagine is in the mesoderm how where why we have another image right after it so it will be even more clear all you have to know is the epithelial lining is from the endoderm but all the main components of the gi tract and stuff like that that is derived from the mesoderm now let's move on to the ectoderm it says the epidermis what is epidermis it's skin but once again ectoderm only gives the epidermis lining the epithelial lining of the skin it does not just give you the full skin the only the epithelial lining in the skin is derived from the ectoderm so the question arises again what what makes the most components of the skin then if you only have the epithelial lining from the ectoderm what happens to the most of the skin on the muscles again you already know the answer that is derived from the mesoderm it might seem complicated but just remember this the epithelial lining in the gi tract respiratory system all that is derived from the endoderm but main components are from the mesoderm again ectoderm on the top on the outside ecto gives you the epithelial lining of the skin and stuff like that but the main components below it the main components that form the skin are derived again from the mesoderm okay you don't have to just go through all this to not memorize it it's only going to make you forget if anything so yeah don't bother wasting your time please we are going to learn everything later so now that we know the gem layer derivatives we don't have to memorize this we know already we know everything about this not everything but yeah the students basic don't worry now we are going to be moving on to week 4 we still have three layered and let's be honest the embryo doesn't form three fat layers we need it to be in an 
embryonic shape like literal human shape we don't just we aren't layers we are if anything we are round shape with layers inside so how does that form that happens in week 4 the folding of the embryo now let me help you with that too so here it is week 4 body folding as you can see here remember the ectoderm mesoderm endoderm all right let's try to find them the ectoderm the blue layer the ectoderm here as the dip here is the primitive streak we have the blue layer which is the ectoderm the maroon layer which is the mesoderm we already knew that and the endoderm which covers the hypodermis remember the hypo the epithelial cell and the hypo yellow one yeah it covers that now we have the endoderm in on its place it is the bottom layer and this white right here is the notochord but we already knew that so in week 4 what happens is we have the ectoderm and the amniotic cavity go down and close in from the below and it forms tube inside a tube inside another tube so what we end up is as you can see here the amniotic cavity it just goes in same with the ectoderm the mesoderm is right here and the endoderm it just pushes together and try to fuse together the endoderm and right here once it is done as you can see the endoderm the yellow one the endoderm we had the endoderm right here it just closes off it is now a circular tube it fuses now it is called the gut tube from the mouth to our cloaca the gut tube that is endoderm we remember that we studied that in the table the epithelial lining endoderm right here the yellow one the gut tube that's what it is now outside it we now have the ectoderm as another tube surrounding it but where's the mesoderm right here the mesoderm is in between the endoderm and the ectoderm remember the skin right outside the the blue one skin that's where the ectoderm is and everything in between muscles layers everything stuff like that that is the mesoderm so ectoderm mesoderm in between and in the middle is the endoderm which is the gut tube surrounding all of that is the amniotic cavity the amniotic cavity the fluid and everything surrounding the baby yes that's what it is now we know how the body folds of course there's gonna be complication in that too and this is really a common one so you should really pay attention to this one what happens when the closing fusion when the tubes try to close the ectoderm and mesoderm and stuff like that they try to close in but they are not able to fuse together or just say have a hole or a gap in them what happens then that abnormality we refer to as gastrocytosis now what is that as you can see right here in this second image let me zoom it for you they close in the endoderm tries to close in but what happens if they doesn't if they leave a gap then the abdominal wall endoderm the gut tube the abdominal wall there will be a gap and all the epiblastic cells they will just move out and what's outside the epiblast if they were to move out and form of course they are gonna form regardless they are gonna form into the organs regardless so what would happen if the epiblastic cells were to escape this from the abdominal gap there is only one layer outside epiderm which is the amniotic cavity so when the ectoblast or the epithelial cells escape from the abdominal gap then we have organs developing outside of the body or inside of the amniotic cavity which we refer to as gastrocytosis let me help you with an image so you might probably have seen this it's quite a common abnormality gastrocytosis you can see the intestine you may see oh it's an intestinal stuff but it is developing outside of the body how did that happen so the abdominal wall had a gap which made the epithelial cells move outside and then develop in the amniotic cavity so we end up with this abnormality now that is all you needed to know from this chapter now we know that the epidermis forms into three layers ectoderm mesoderm and the endoderm now we know that the hypoblast just dies off and in its place 
the hypoderm takes over the ectoderm takes place of the epiplast and we have the mesoderm in between the epiderm the mesoderm and the hypoderm now on during week 4 they just folds on and form three different tubes the endoderm will form the gut tube the epithelial lining of gut tube and stuff like that the mesoderm is what forms most of the layers of the body or the organs or connective tissue muscles and each and everything and the ectoderm is what forms the outside so the skin epithelial layers and stuff like that but that is again that is it for this chapter and that is it for embryology i hope i hope i really hope that you guys were able to learn or know what i was talking about if you have any questions just write them in the comment below i hope you were able to relate from different chapters because i told you watch them one by one in a streak so chapter 1 2 3 because even in this chapter we cleared so many doubts from the chapters about them we now know everything about the clinical correlates we have a clear view because we studied this so yes it is related and really that is all i hope you guys enjoyed the embryology section the next is histology i know boy i'm really not looking forward to it but again i will try my best to get you the students perspective and the views i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did just wait for the next one that's all i can say and i will see you guys next goodbye